Hello, welcome back to the Last Shot Podcast with me, All Things Wrestling, and Stefan. Welcome. We are back, dude. The original uh, club, huh? Ah, the <laughs> original club is back. We have no guests this week because, well, uh, people are busy. You, even if it's or- original, dude. It's still going to be Last good. week, we had a great time with your friend. Yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago, great time, so... Yeah, it's yeah. nice to have them on occasion. Nice. Like next time you will see Ben in a video will be when we do our end of year awards, which will be a long arduous journey of us discussing who we're going to give the award to. Yeah, Get many, many, for... many debates for that one. And listen, I have an idea. We are going to do pools, okay? I know people are going to vote. Uh, at least six, seven people are going to vote there. Uh, so. I'm, go- uh, you know, you have like a site for a pools, and we're gonna do like uh, oh. seven, eight. You know, the worst, this, best, this, blah, blah, blah. I was just gonna do uh, it on YouTube because you can put polls on a video. You can put only one. No, you can put multiple polls on an actual video. I'm pretty sure. We can do whatever you want, dude. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. But that will be coming in yeah. the next couple of weeks. Our video will be uh, but- coming up probably New Year's Eve, yeah. New, uh, maybe the day before New Year's Eve. Something yeah, around about uh, the end of the year uh, exactly. the video will be released. Exactly. And we are not going to do that. I think you can agree with me on this. I mean, we're not going to do that before TLC, after. Oh, so. oh yeah, it'll definitely be after TLC because yeah, we need to have the last make pay-per-view sense. of the year to yeah. discuss. Which we it all know that sense. nothing's going to happen on TLC. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. yeah, it makes sense before, after TLC, not before. Definitely, but it will have to be, we'll <laughs> definitely probably have to record before Christmas day because Jesus I'm going to be <laughs> sure, <hectic. probably. laughs> uh, but anyway let's let's get straight on to the ratings and none of them are good this week so Rory's Aww. down uh, by just a couple fa- just a couple thousand like 20,000 but still down mm-hmm. uh, Rory uh, just just want to inform you now. Unfortunately, we cannot bring you the AW and NXT ratings due to them being delayed because of Thanksgiving. Oh, screw, screw ratings, NXT won. Let, Easily, with all the matches they had. Well, let's see if they won the ratings when we discuss it on the podcast next week. Uh, backstage, because CM Punk was on there, lost like 60,000 people. because. What did they expect? Exactly. The only pe- reason people would have tuned in is because CM Punk <laughs> like, was on there. Think about this: you you literally work seven, eight, nine hours in the US. You come back, you come home. You know, you have a dinner, whatever, and you gotta stay awake like until you gotta st- literally watch that at eleven p.m. Who the fuck wants to watch that at eleven? P.m.? Exactly. You know, when you get when you have to get up for work at six, seven to fucking drive, you know, to another town or to and all the traffic and everything, like. There is no way someone, a lot of people are staying up. That's exactly. the reason why the ratings are down for that show. I mean, I would watch it, but in England, it starts at four o'clock in the pissing morning for a shitty talk yeah. show. Dude, we are even crazy. I'm in Serbia right now. You're in UK. Yeah. We are even crazy I'm... for staying up to four p.m. Dude, if these uh, four, four a.m. Sorry, these people in U.S. If it was for them, four a.m. If for them, Ross started in one or two am they wouldn't even stay to watch that shit oh, so God, maybe no. we should get more respected than them you know what i mean like exactly. at least stay until 11 like jesus christ we c- if we can stay until one two you know so exactly uh and then smackdown was down to 2.3 from 2.6 last week so everything dropped in ratings uh ap- apparently they uh had competition from the world series coverage you know, I don't even know the ratings. Do have oh, the ratings. oh no! Oh, apparently it was on Fox Sports One. So if that was a Fox Sports One rating, that's pretty good. Uh, but you don't know the ratings. No. Okay. No, that was yeah. That was SmackDown. I mean, well. you don't have the exact. You don't have the exact number. You don't have. They still uh, don't report anything, right? No, this is just kind of. Est- I can assume. Yeah, these because are of the tax giving, we will get the ratings for SmackDown. Apparently we should actually get the, ratings now. It is the ratings. For 2.3. Yeah, I've got the ratings. They're, the only one that got delayed was AEW and NXT for some pissing reason. The only one I care about. Dude, that's what I'm asking you for SmackDown. It's 3.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.3. 2.
2.3, okay. They, they had 2.6 last week. Prison. But apparently this week it aired on Fox Sports 1. So if it got 2.3 on Fox Sports 1, that's good. Because last time they went on there, they got under a million. Yeah, which means there is no excuse for last time. No, there's happened. definitely not. There is no fucking excuse. Especially now with this. I don't want to hear any fucking excuse if they sink below one again at some point. You know? Mm. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's the last of the rate. Oh, uh, just one more rating thing. NXT outdrew Raw at, uh, on fans in Chicago in the building. They had... Uh, 10,000 people in the building where Raw had just over 7,000 and Smackdown had nearly 8,000 from the week before. So NXT TakeOver drew massively. And you're surprised? No. Not at all. Exactly. Just thought I'd point that one out. But just to break up the thing before we talk about AEW ratings, uh, it's been reported by Brian Alvarez from wrestling observer that apparently Vince is done pushing Huberto for the time being. He's going to be giving the Cedric Alexander treatment whereas you occasionally see him on TV wins a bit but he ain't going to get anything done. Apparently Vince thinks he wasn't getting over because Vince Uh, is an arsehole. You know I said this before and I'll say it again. You you, you just see some people like this who there is just something missing bro. And the the guy doesn't look like a star. Doesn't have that swagger, you know. He doesn't. It doesn't. He doesn't work for me. And I can agree with with Vince on this one. No, I'm not you the know? biggest fan. His wrestling's solid enough, but he he just he lacks character and lacks personality. Exactly. He's a good wrestler. Though. I can't I can't doubt him on that one. He he is a flippy wrestler, which um, is not what what Vince likes, you know. Hmm. No, he definitely doesn't like it. And the only reason he's there at all is because he's Hispanic and Vince can play off that card. Oh, yeah. No that's offense to anyone, but that's literally that, what yeah. Vince is thinking when he sees a Mexican person. Oh, I could capitalize on them because they're Mexican. Yeah, don't you think the same thing is with Keith Lee because he is black? Mm, I think Vince is impressed by his actual wrestling more than anything. Because Vince is yeah, not uh, not a I guy that likes Vince. small uh, or fat people. He likes bodybuilders. But to see Keith Lee move like a cruiserweight at his size. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Keith Lee is six foot two, six foot three, and he is three hundred and twenty pounds, and he's yeah, not exactly fat. that. That's what Vince. Is. He is fat. Yeah, Vince doesn't like fat. Keith Lee, all respect to you. Not insulting you, mate. Just. No. Actually, going on proper terms here in Vince's mind, anyway. But anyway, no, I don't give a fuck. I'll tell you why. Keith Lee can be three hundred fifty, four hundred. <laughs> he can care. move. The like guy can move away. like a guy that has like a hundred and fifty. Okay, exactly, which is impressive. So, Very impressive. Uh, which is what impressed yeah, Vince. I can, I can see Vince because of his height and because of everything. I can see Vince being high on him. He is high but on him. I have problem with Kevin Dunn. I still think that guy, that motherfucker, is going to look at Keith Lee and say, oh, why are we going to push this guy, you know? I mean, are we going to turn him into a hook or some shit? Like, I can definitely see Kevin Dunn doing something like oh, that. Oh, he's going to turn up into, like, a peel monster. We know it, but... The guy is good. The guy is very good. Especially for... How many years experience has Keith got? I don't think he's got that many. I don't know, but... When this guy was in the ring, when this guy was in the ring with Roman Reigns at the end of Survivor Series, man, it felt like a big fight. And I love thing about Roman Reigns. I know I was hating Roman Reigns before. We all did when he was over pushed. But dude, I love the big fight feel when Roman Reigns is in the ring. And there is just something about Reigns, what he brings in when it's you know two legit opponents like Keith Lee or Brock Lesnar. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking from WrestleMania 31. I'm not speaking for other fights that he had with Lesnar because that's. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, that ending with Keith Lee and Reigns was great, man. And Keith Lee was definitely put over despite the loss because he pinned Seth Rollins. What the hell do you want more than pinning Seth Rollins, you know? Exactly. It's a very, very good uh, thing. Also, good thing for Keith Lee, they can't copyright his name because it's his real name. That's well. Uh, it, it happened. It, it, it happened to Cody Rhodes. Because Rhodes isn't his legal last name. His real name is Cody Ronalds. 
That's oh, yeah. why. That's why Jesus he couldn't Christ. keep it. Yeah. That's why they couldn't copy. Yeah, can't yeah. copyright John <laughs> Cena or Kurt Angle because that's their legitimate name. That's why they can't copyright Matt Hardy. Yep. Uh, but Keith Lee has been wrestling since two thousand five. So what's that like? Fourteen years experience. A lot of experience. Let's just say that. I mean, yeah. You see guys who have like two, three years, four years of experience, like Velvet in Dream. Like this guy has. S- to double as much as experience like the Velvet in Dream or something like that. So, triple, you know what I mean? So, he definitely, in my opinion, this guy, I would love to see a match between him and Lesnar. I don't know why. I just think no, the big think part would, would be work there, very yeah. well. He could be a legitimate yeah. threat to Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but now, AEW have released their top five rankings for this week okay. because we can't talk about anything else to do with AEW ratings, so we might as well <laughs> talk about this. Moxley is number one in the men's division, then Pac, then Omega, then Cody, then MJF. Not surprised. Uh, then women's division does not surprise me at all. She, uh, Ikara Shida, number one. I don't know who she Sakura. Is. Uh, she does the one that faced for the women's championship at Full Gear. Mm-hmm. You should know who she is. She's amazing. I know who she is because that match was horrible. What? Her versus Rio? I can't I don't take Rio seriously. She needs to drop the belt. She is fantastic. I'm sorry, dude. She hey, was amazing. She, was she looks like a kid, five year old girl. Welcome to Japanese wrestlers! Hey, I good. like her. Just put her in the under the roll. Don't have her like this, okay? Mm. I'm not gonna hate on her, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Saka is number two. Britt Baker's number three. Who I'm surprised didn't get five for showing up on NXT. <sighs> Why the hell did she get put onto NXT TV? I'm not. I'm not happy about that one myself. What? Also, I would like to confirm. WWE had AEW shirts in the crowd on this week's uh, SmackDown. Or Raw, one of the two. So nice. they've officially stopped confiscating and making you remove AEW shirts. As Vince far as I can tell. conspiracy. And WWE is working with AEW. And everything is Vince's plot. <laughs> oh, God, no. And Bree Priestley's not. Uh, Nyla Rose is four, and B Priestley's five. And then. Bree Baker, Bree Baker. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh. Santana and Ortiz are number one in tag, then Young Bucks, then Best Friends, then Lucha Brothers, and then Private Body. Who are the champions currently? Uh, SCU crazy? for the tag division. SCU. How are they not the list? Uh, yeah. I'm assuming this is, I think the ratings work is who's most in line for a championship match. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. I think that's how yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah, the top challengers. Yeah, so. Obviously, yeah. You wouldn't have the champion. Yeah, they're gonna go for title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of how they look like they're working the rankings. It makes sense. Uh, and last thing I have to talk about ratings uh, for actual things is uh, the Steve Austin podcast got more viewers on the WWE Network than Takeover. It was second ranked on the most viewership on the network. First Survivor Series, then the. I think it only helped because it was after Survivor Series. Yep. Uh, And people probably, you know, you have a beer after six hours of fucking Survivor Series, you sit down and you watch two legends talk. I mean, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Um, And. Just Ryan Satan put out a public statement saying oh, why. Oh, that guy. Yes, I'm not the biggest fan, but he he stated why he didn't address some of the controversial news, such as AC Jordan Miles leaving WWE. Uh, he yeah. said, "I'm not a producer. I don't make those decisions. I'm just the guy that's there to break the news and get told what to say." Which okay, very nice, very nice but, from him. But yet, it doesn't stop you making a load of shitty stories up about Sasha Banks. Let me tell you something. Ryan Satan, whatever his name is, he looks like if Damien Sandow was retarded. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. And um, I'm sticking by that, by that you know, statement because the guy is a fucking idiot. 
I, I know long history from from this guy, you know. I listen to people and I don't respect this guy. Fuck this guy. And the only reason he got the job that he did in Fox is because he has connections, so. Yeah. Whatever. He sucks. He does. He sucks. He's one Let of the best you. people that you, lie. You, you, will be a, you will do a better job than him. Yeah, I wouldn't lie. Be like... But he didn't help himself by... He didn't... If you use the word, it's rumoured... And not just flat out say Sasha Banks is returning on Monday. If I, I, I can say there's kind of murmurs saying that Sasha may potentially return, that stops me from saying I'm lying because I'm saying she could return. Oh, speaking of scamming people, which it is kind of scamming people in his case. Uh, are we finished with this topic? Because I just want to bring something yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I'm done with Ryan Satan. I think what about Smackdown and uh, Bray Wyatt's new toy? What do you think? How the fuck the the WWE scammers? It's uh, literally don't give me that looks shit. like a don't toy give me that belt. Shit. Yeah, but don't that give me wasn't that shit the shit custom belt. belt design he showed off when he first got the belt because he did a really cool custom design himself. But and that's it... not a toy, dude. Like, oh, well, not I for the pissing price, anyway. I, I expected a character. If you anyone I mean? wanted to know the price of this belt. It was six thousand five hundred dollars for that belt. Okay, so who's ready to sell uh, your left or right testicle or a kidney? Exactly, uh, but that doesn't even say how much the actual belt was made for. We don't know how much braids cost. Like shit, dude. I honestly feel I don't know why I feel if you would kind of touch that belt or something that it would kind of break easily. I, I just I don't know. I just have that feeling. I, I mean, sorry, but. You want to charge people six thousand five hundred dollars for that championship? Okay, let's be realistic. That probably costs sixty dollars. It's probably worth that that much. Like, it looks like that. Exactly. So. It doesn't look expensive. It just looks like a tacky little toy. I'm seriously wondering if there will be a people in a month or two from now. Literally wearing, you know, that belt at WrestleMania or in the crowd. Or I'm, I'm, I'll be waiting to see that. Because if someone actually buys that belt, I gotta be honest, dude. You're a fucking idiot. And I'm not trying to sound like to insult anyone, but you're a fucking idiot. If really you, mind, uh, you can buy yeah. a replica WWE Championship for five hundred dollars. So you can buy basically who knows how many belts. For that one belt, <laughs> I think I think you can buy a replica of any belt for like a th I think the most you can buy one for is like one thousand two hundred. When it's literally, it's literally, you know, you know the one Lesnar used when he lost it. It was basically the yeah. same thing, just slightly lower quality. That's the ones you can buy for just over a grand. Think but, about this: you can probably buy all the belts, all the replica belts. For that you price. could buy the World Heavyweight Championship for about five hundred freaking dollars. I'd rather have that design. Yes. I mean, you can buy all the belts, honestly, dude. You can buy Magnum. all the NXT. belts for that price. <laughs> Think about it. How, uh, I'm, I'm serious. Like, if someone really buys this, you're a fucking idiot. Okay, I don't care how much money you have. You're a fucking idiot. And it's not a nice it's design just, either. Yeah. Right, I'm actually going to go on WWE Euro Shop and look at title belts. I don't have that belt in the UK. I was in Europe shop earlier. Yeah, I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking for the general pricing of title belts. It's probably five hundred dollars or something like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, NXT Championship replica from 2017, two hundred and eighty-eight pound. Uh, Cruiserweight Championship, two hundred and ninety-seven pound. Uh, the old IC title, two hundred and nearly-three hundred pound. Two hundred and seventy pound for the World Heavyweight Championship. Smoking School Steve Austin belt. Two hundred and eighty-eight pound. I can't. Uh, oh, the under yeah. the undisputed championship. Two hundred and seventy-nine pound. Yeah. So for people, that's about three hundred eighty. Oh, three hundred seventy. Okay. This uh, this around three hundred eighty dollars. Uh, this makes sense. The brand new Intercontinental Championship that they've just made. Okay. Three hundred and eighty-seven pound. Three hundred eighty-seven. Yep, and that's for the brand new belt. Oh, that's exactly uh, exactly five hundred dollars for you guys in the US. So, Daniel Bryan's two hundred seventy, two hundred ninety-seven pound. You could buy all of these belts, all of them, for 
for the price. You can even buy the Up Up Down Down Championship replica for two hundred and ninety seven pounds. <laughs> oh, that's for the price of one belt. <laughs> The NXT North American Championship. Oh, you got mini replicas. You've got the North Americans three hundred and thirty-three pound. Every Easy. single belt you could buy for the price of this. They are Dude, massively. You could, you could probably buy a PS4, a 4K TV, and few games. Yeah, you definitely can for that price. You know, so don't don't uh, be smart. Don't like don't fucking spend money on this bullshit. I don't know. Definitely don't spend fucking six grand. Hey, speaking of gaming, you can build a goddamn monster of PC, dude. For <laughs> like, a fraction of that cost. I could it, buy could three... The... I could make three PCs yeah. amazing exactly. for the price of that belt. That's insane, dude. That's fucking insane. It, it, I, would, I could this. kind of you, get you it. Said, hmm? You said three PCs. Think about this. You could probably make about... I don't know, you could probably make about 10 PCs that are just a solid gaming PCs for that. Yep. Jesus Christ, for one belt. Oh my god. But it just doesn't help, the design isn't good. The design doesn't That's even thing. look nice. But, but, but when you can actually, when you think about what you can buy for that money and you think, why the fuck would I give that money for a belt? Like, why don't I just get sense? a WWE Championship belt and put the Fiend mask over it? There you go. Solve yourself. You know what would be? You know what would be hysterical if they actually corrected and they went to the WWE shop and said, "Oh, it was a mistake. We put six by mistake. Uh, we put uh, a zero um, by mistake. It's meant to be six hundred and fifty dollars." <laughs> Imagine, dude. Imagine if that's it. Went if that was the case. First of all, it would, it would be hilarious as fuck that yeah. they actually had to. I'm expecting you know, them to drop it down to six hundred and fifty dollars. Imagine people who actually bought and they were like, "Oh, we forgot to," you know. Yeah. <laughs> and they need to run for the refunds. Yeah, bullshit. Dude. I, I hope seriously. I hope nobody bought this shit. I'm really hoping no one buys it for that price. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, let's move on to more WWE stuff. Uh, <laughs> WWE is. Trademarking the names Barely Legal and Cyber Slam, which are two old ECW pay per view names. Mm, what's. Uh, apparently. The first name? Barely Legal. Oh, that's the first shot that Cody Rhodes, because he wanted one of the, you know, trademarks from WCW, actually. So. Oh, he's got he's getting them because WWE don't own the trademarks over the most of the WCW. Yeah, but names the, uh, that's WWE's response, like barely illegal or whatever. Yeah, because it was a what? Yeah, because everybody cares, and like they're do, going to make a show. Bollocks! Are they going to make a show? Yep, I don't know. Like those are just probably going to be a goddamn house shows, like a star cast and that bullshit. So. Where nothing happens, not no title change hands and that kind of stuff. So. Mm. Alright, let's move on. We have Dave Meltzer star ratings to discuss for both Okay. Uh, we're NXT. The series. Yeah. Uh, let's just do TakeOver first. Uh, I'm going to okay. skip the dark match that nobody actually saw. Uh, we had the Women's War Game match. He gave 4.25 stars. Uh, I think he overrated that one, to be honest. I think, you know, I didn't see, a lot of people are saying that match was fucking great. I honestly don't no. think it was great. It, it was good, good, it was entertaining, but it wasn't. I'm going to go with 3.75. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you on that one. Yep. Uh, then we have the triple threat uh, number one contenders match between Dane, Dawn and Priest. Also, I'm going also with 3.71. Uh, yeah, I agree with that one. Dave gave it 3.5 stars. Uh, then we had Matt Riddle versus Finn Balor. He gave four stars. Oof. I wasn't overly yeah. impressed with this match. It's strange if I give him that match also 3.75. Uh, I'm going to give it four, same as Dave. I'm going to go with 3.75. Okay, and then the men's... Of uh, war game match, he gave four point five stars. Oh, uh, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, we can give it four point five. It, it was, was it was a good match, but it was probably the worst war games match that we got so far. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, like I don't know, 
you know, I'm a fan of Dunn's Creed Era, dude, but you can't put these guys in the war games anymore, like... About to say, it's getting a bit redundant, do, you know, know what I mean? mean? It's the same shit. So, yeah, Cold goes else. and gets loads of tables. Yeah, and, dude, with all of them holding titles, they should... Why is it even... Why is war games man match? Why did it even happen, you know what I mean? They yeah. could have just had a woman go there and tear the house down. Without bullshit that we got, actually, because I actually didn't like with... Uh, you know, uh, Dakota Kai turning and that kinds of shit, so... I think it would probably have been more effective if she turned in the match and then just yep. climbed out and made her team lose. Yeah, speaking of Kevin Owens, I actually thought Kevin Owens is gonna not join Dunn's Spirit Era because I don't think nobody will join Dunn's I just thought for a second that he's gonna screw. I don't know if I'm the only person who thought that, he, that he's going to screw Champ or something. Uh, no, I uh, people said that in the comments when I, when I was live streaming the takeover. It, it did cross a lot of people's mind, and I just went, "He's not doing it," and I was correct. No, no. he was yeah. just there for like a one-time gig, as far as things are going. Now yep. let's get to Survivor Series. Ooh. Tag Team Battle Royale got one point five stars. Same. I think I get two and a half. It's average. Okay. Then Kalisto vs. Leo Rush vs. Akira Tazawa, he gave 2.5 stars. I'm giving uh, I that. I didn't watch the match. I'm going to give it 3.25 stars. These are probably okay. different than what I gave on my review. Because okay. you kind of reflect after. When you do one straight after, you kind of don't give yourself time to absorb everything that's happened. Yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, I didn't watch the match, so I, I really can't tell. Uh, New Day versus Undisputed Era versus Viking Raiders, three stars. This match was a bit... Nah. Three stars, yep. Yeah, I I'll agree with that. Agree. It was... First of all, I gotta mention, you have the Undisputed Era on a fucking pre-show, and your former WWE champion on a fucking pre-show. Are these people fucking serious in the WWE? Like, I don't know. How can you have the Undisputed Era at Coffee Kingston on a pre-show? The guy was just champion, like... Yest like yesterday, like literally, he lost to Lesnar, and Undisputed Era was in the War Games match. How can you have them on the pre-show? It's bullshit. I know. Yeah. You know? Then we have the Women Survivor Series match. He gave two point five stars. Uh, I'm gonna go with two point. Yep. Also. I'm gonna give it back. three. Yeah. I wanted to go with three, but I then remember some things. What the fuck is with all the eliminations? Like, rapid eliminations? That's a bullshit. No, no. You know what I mean? It makes excitement, I guess. Uh, then we go to AJ Styles, Roddy Strong, and Akamura. In my opinion, this was the second best match of the night. In my opinion, it was the best. Dave gave it 3.5 stars. <laughs> what the fucking... Uh, okay. Uh, 4.25. 4.75. <laughs> Okay. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that match, especially with the Roderick Strong sneak win, which was really good for him as well. Oh, my correction. 4.5. Yeah. 4.5. Uh, then we have Pete Dunn versus Adam Cole for the NXT title. Oh, 4.75. Uh, he gave it 4.25. I'm giving it 4.5. Okay. So we, we, we just switched places for a match. Like, <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend, he gave 3.5 stars. Bro, I don't like this match at all. I thought it was it was a lot better than the Seth Rollins matches, though. 2.5. Uh, I'm giving it 3. He gave it 3.5. It was you got to admit, it was a lot better than the Seth Rollins matches, at least. It was. It really was. So. Uh, That's he true. gave the Men's Survivor Series match 4.25 stars. Exactly. That's 2-1, because that's my score for that. That's... 4.20, uh, 4.25. Uh, I'm going to give it 4. It was only really at the end where it started picking up steam. I got to mention, dude, like, how can you have Matt Riddle elim eliminated there in 5 fucking seconds and you have Damien Priest basically taking a pin, the guy didn't even throw a punch, all the rapid elimination, that's bullshit to me. I don't want to see that shit. I know, the only person yeah. that actually looked stronger out of this was Champer and Keith Lee. The other three just looked like jobbers from NXT. And for Riddle, it's a fucking shame because this is the guy who's not not him, but what they did to him. Like, this is the guy who literally wants to retire Brock Lesnar. If someone told me that this... If I don't know who's Matt Riddle, and if someone told me, oh, this guy is talking about retiring Brock Lesnar, after this, I would say, who the fuck is this guy? Who's he gonna retire? Like, it's bullshit. Yeah. So, 
uh, I don't like that, you know? No, neither did I. Yep. Uh, then Lesnar vs. Mysterio I gave 2.5 stars. Uh, 2.25. 2.75. It was... It had a nice little bit in it with Dominic and that. It's just, it was entertaining. You knew Ray weren't going to win. Yeah, I knew. And at some at one point, people thought that he's going to win. Mm. And then, let's go to the most disappointing match of the entire night. The women. Shane and Becky and Bailey. That match was just trash. I remember one thing. Actually, two things. I don't remember anything in the match. I remember Shayna tapping out Bailey, and I remember Becky Lynch attacking Shayna at the end. Yeah, that's about all I remember. I'm gonna go with two stars. 1.75. I exactly. mean, to be fair... 1.75. I'll give it actually 5.5. I just don't want anyone to shit on me. That's it. To be fair, it would have been a lot better of a match if you hadn't have put it on last. Why the hell was it on last? It, the crowd couldn't give a shit about the match at that there point. There is two matches that could have went last, and I, and I know you'll agree with me on this. It's... Okay. It's cool done, or triple threat match between... Strong Nakamura and Adrian Styles. Yeah, exactly. That would have made that would have put. I mean, Shane is not the best person to represent NXT Women's Division anyway, because she's probably one of the worst wrestlers on the NXT Women's Division. I don't know, but um, I don't. I wouldn't have Shane and Baszler. Hey, if someone wants Becky Lynch and Shane and Baszler at WrestleMania, much like like. More power to you, dude. Shayna Baszler is so slow in the ring, and you put her there in the main event. I mean, I like we, we say Ronda was limited, but at least Ronda entertained when she yeah. was doing stuff half the time. But Shayna's just basically, I'm going to put you, you know, in a chokehold. When I it hear, lose. congratulations. When I hear main event, when I hear those words, those two words, main event, I want to see a big fight feel something completely different than what happened on the show. Oh god, that was... Uh, really even Vince hated that. it, for god's sake. And if Vince hated it... You know something's wrong. I'm telling you, dude, like, Cole Dunnan or, or Triple Threat match should have been there. Like, there is no question, like, that two matches would... Would have been much better, because... I don't think people give a shit about that Triple Threat match that we actually liked. Because it was bad timing. You know, you had women f first put people to sleep, and then you put these three guys. So, it's wrong. Mm. Yeah. Uh, next, we have predictions for Starcade, which is... Yeah, the, the glorified house show. Yeah, it's basically just a glorified house show. But it gives me a reason to stream tomorrow night, so... More how okay. to do it. Uh, we have Kabuki Warriors versus Becky Lynch and Charlotte versus Bailey and Sasha versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross for the women's I don't championship. Know what the fuck you said, but, but okay. Bailey and Sasha versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross versus Becky and Charlotte versus the Kabuki Warriors for women's championship. Okay, I, I can bet that we will have a title change first time in a long time. I'll show Alexa Bliss and Nikki are going to win. Yeah, that's my prediction. This is the first match for Alexa in quite a while, actually. I can see Nikki doing most of the work, though, for that. But man, I you know I always said bad things about. I, I never liked her, Alexa as a wrestler, but man, I missed her. I, I'm gonna be honest. She, she's uh, such a good character. She is. She is mm -hmm. a good character. Uh, then we have a last man standing match between Rusev and Bobby Lashley. <laughs> Are they fighting? Who's gonna bang Lana after? Afterwards or something. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna say if they're gonna end this feud, Rusev will win. They're not gonna end the feud, dude. I wouldn't be surprised if they have this feud until WrestleMania. <laughs> I'm uh, going to go with I'm Lana go with helps Bobby Lashley up at the count of nine. So Bobby Lashley wins with Lana's help. I'm going to go. Uh. And say that obviously Lashley needs to win because it's a heel versus baby face and it's the first match hmm. that they have. So Lashley has to win. But yeah. then Rusev needs revenge later on and he will win, obviously. So. But yeah, Lashley will win. And there is two things how I think will go down. First thing, uh, Lana will put Lashley's foot on the rope 
and that's the way he's going to win. It's or, the last man uh, standing she, match. Oh yeah, then if she's going to screw referee uh, and pull out referee or something like that, I don't. Uh, I think my helping Bobby Lashley up is the be- probably the only way the Lana could help Lashley win this the last man standing maybe, match. Maybe Lana takes a bump from Rusev, so and then Lashley bump. manages to sc- get Rusev down. After that, it could happen. Yeah. Something's yeah, yeah. going to happen with Lana, R- Bobby, and Rusev during this match to make don't, Lashley don't win. Don't fucking tell me that show is main, uh, that match is main event. No, he definitely won't. I know. I don't know which match is going to main event. Okay, what else do we have? We have the Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman in a steel cage match of the Universal Championship. This is the There's your main match event. Ever. That match is this going is to be. That's going to be shit. And we already know the Fiend's going to win. Like, I don't know how can. Like I said, it's a half show. Like, you know, it doesn't have a story. It doesn't make sense. And our. I mean, did Vince. Was Vince probably like, oh, you know. After six weeks, it was a brand split. Who the fuck cares? Everyone probably forgot it was a brand split. We don't care. Let's go back to our regular strategy programming. And we're going to have the Fiend Bray Wyatt against Braun Strowman, despite that they were in the other brands. Who cares? Yeah. People forgot about brand split. That's what Vince thinks, dude. Yeah, we didn't. We know. <laughs> uh, then we have King Corbin versus Roman Reigns, one that actually has a storyline involved with it. I mean, we know who's going to win this. This is a fucking house. <laughs> we already know Reigns is going to win. <laughs> then we have Eric Rowan versus Seth Rollins. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's it for me. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, you stay. You will have to watch no, this listen, match in its entirety. How can someone... Dude, if you read that theory and if you see the promotions for StarCast and you see that match... You seriously gonna go there and spend the money to watch that shit? Okay. God no. No. Match might be entertaining. I want Rowan to okay. win. Okay. We know who's gonna win. I'm not even. We not already sure. know it's Seth Rollins. Yeah. Uh, then we have a handicap match for the Intercontinental Title: Miz versus Sa- Sami Zayn and Nakamura. I have no uh, idea why it's a handicap match. We already know Nakamura's gonna retain. Uh. Or. Or Sami Zayn's going to cost Nakamura the match and then Nakamura will turn on Sami. I mean... I see Sami Zayn as a babyface right now. I think he should go back to that babyface from 2014-15. Yeah, Yeah. I think so. Yeah, and... How great would be he would want to rumble? I'm just fantasy booking right now, but if he would want to rumble as a... That baby, as a baby face that he was, and he goes to face Lesnar at WrestleMania. Man, that would be fucking cool. Yeah, that would be like, good. But hey, knowing Vince, knowing WWE, they're gonna bury this guy. Then mm. fate under. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Nakamura to retain. I'm going to. It's a house show. Uh, then the New Day vs Revival for the SmackDown Tag Titles. Oh, hopefully this show is main eventing. <laughs> yeah, well, that match will main event. Yeah, I have a conspiracy here. Uh, you know, Vince likes to change things, and the reason we got done this with Era New Day and uh, Viking Riders was because fans wanted the revival in that match, and they gave it to New Day. I can honestly see they don't care about tag team division, so I can honestly see them just dropping titles back to revival. Yeah. I could see it happening. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think it will happen. I'm, but I can see it, and I wouldn't be surprised. That's one. No, I, I'm still going with New Day to retain. I'm going with New Day. So. Uh, it doesn't look like a half bad card for a little house show thing. It's going to be entertaining enough. Seth Rollins and Eric Rowan. It's going to be better than Shawn Michaels and Undertaker at WrestleMania 30, uh, Definitely. 25. Remember that, people. Yes, and Roman Reigns versus Baron, uh, Baron Corbin will probably be the match of the century. Yeah, and Bobby Lashley and uh, Russo is going to be better than uh, than Triple H and Undertaker in the Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania. I know, that, that's going to be better than the Macho Man going against Hulk Hogan for the first time. Come on, dude. <laughs> well, there's a woman involved, so it's basically the same. Oh, it's going to be better than Shawn Michaels and Scott Hall in the ladder match. Oh yeah, definitely. Come on. 
Oh god. <laughs> yeah, like you said, but yeah, it's a solid show. Dude. It's for a hot show. Yeah. Hmm. Yep. All right. Now let's. We have a slight update to this Coy Graves situation. Let's just breeze through this because I don't want to give him any more attention than he deserves. He apologized to Maro Ranallo. He said, I sent out a tweet. It was an unpopular opinion, and as often I do, with the intentions of just stirring up a little controversy, maybe have some fun to talk about on TV here on the show. It was made not the most professional way to go about things. It was not meant to offend, disrespect, or disparage anyone. That was never my intention. If it was taken as such, I apologise deeply. That, that was not my intention. I would never intentionally cause anyone undue stress, especially a co-worker. So basically, his apology is, I'm sorry that it offended you. That was not my intention uh, to offend he, you. Okay, that, that's so not... He wanted... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm trying to fathom how... Yeah. How a f half arsed apology that is. I'm sorry that my thing that was offensive offended you. So he wanted to start a little bit of a controversy on TV. Whatever. Yeah. Like, is this guy fucking mental, dude? He knows that Mauro Ronaldo is dealing with stuff. With yeah. health problems. With issues. And you're gonna go and say that like... Dude, that word, contro uh, controversy... That shows that he's a fucking jerk. I don't care yeah. because he knew with what, with what, uh, with what uh, was Maro Dillon. So, I mean, obviously WWE did not have Maro Ronello on NXT this week, and he is reportedly in quite rough shape with his mental health after this. They, you know what? Knowing WWE and Vince, they're probably going to have uh, Corey Grace. Corey Grace is a fucking victim of this shit. Probably, even though he's not. I mean, I have all the respect in the world for Mauro Ronaldo. Yeah. Some may say he's yeah. sensitive because he can't take criticism, but people don't realise what bipolar does to you. Exactly. So why would you go there and fuck with him and then apologise? Like, this guy's a fucking idiot. Well, apologise in quotations there, because that wasn't really an apology at all. Hey, he seems like a very nice guy. So. <laughs> yeah. Like a car seems like a very good thing when it's travelling 100 no, miles an hour at you. Not, not Griggs, bro. Oh, oh yeah, Marinello does seem like a very lovely person. Yeah. Corey Gray's an arsehole. Yeah. I, I can't hurt my feelings, but when you pick on Marinello for literally no reason apart from the fact he's doing his job and doing it damn fucking well, I can't defend, I can't give you any form of sympathy for that. I mean... Oh yeah, I'm just trying to treat a big controversy and do do this. Fuck off, man. Uh, you know this? Uh, you you've seen that gif? Everywhere is gifs of that, <laughs> with Cole getting skyrocketed basically in the crowd by Keith Lee. Yeah. How how that? You know that fucking sucks that Mar Ronaldo Mar Ronaldo wasn't there to comment on that. That would have been amazing. That's the thing. You know, there are some moments where you just miss Mauro Ronaldo. You know? Hmm. Alright, now let's move to some good. Some good news. Matt Hardy has sent out a tweet stating, Please don't feel bad for me. I'm just in a WWE slump as of right now. I can see it will probably continue for a few more weeks in the future. But I'm confident I'll get out of it in a couple of months and get my groove back. So wait, he wants to go out of the WWE, right? You can't break a broken vessel. Yes. What the hell has he done since he came back? Won the tag titles a couple of times. Maybe he's going to go first. If he leaves, he's going to go and first del delete our age and then go to AEW. <laughs> Maybe. But anyway, yeah. he's he's been doing a lot of stuff regarding his broken universe on his YouTube channel and Twitter anyway. I've not really kept up with it. I have a question. It. I have a question for you. Like, yes. Would you be surprised if he... I don't know how's the relationship with him. Uh, I don't actually know what his relationship is like with WWE. I'm going to assume not good since he's doing fuck all. Just, I don't get why you have Matt Hardy and you're just wasting him. How? It's like wrestling. 
But yeah, but right, but he is so good. That's like having Hulk Hogan and having him jobbing to freaking anybody and everybody. Great, but uh, by twenty tw uh, in twenty twenty, we're gonna have broken Matt Hardy and Issue Three back in TNA. I hope so. I really hope so, because EC3 needs to leave, because, my God, they have buried him more than The Undertaker has buried his opponents in the last 20 years. I was one of the guys who was saying that he needs to be in a War Games match. Yeah, it, it would have been perfect for the War Games people. match. Oh, yeah. But uh, when you type in EC3 War Games on Twitter, nobody gives a shit about EC3. Nobody even said that. Like, few, few only people, so... Yeah, but how is it it's like not his fault? It's WWE's him. shit booking that's the, that's thing. the problem. Yeah, that's the that's the thing. Uh, to me, it seems like WWE killed him. That people don't even people forget who the fuck he is. Exactly, they have just forgotten who who he is, and what he is about. Yep. Really? But let's move on to another person that might be leaving. Uh, Luke Harper has trademarked Brody Lee, which is his former wrestling name before he joined WWE. It Very is smart, believed man. that his contract will be extended into early 2020 due to his uh, being off for injury, and they have apparently have that clause. But as of now, it looks like as soon as he gets a chance, he will jump out of WWE because, well... They have so misused Luke Harper. Yeah, he would be great for a mid-card title in AEW. Uh, he is not the guy who's going to go there and change the goddamn culture, you know what I mean? No, but no, but, but... He can be a good mid-card guy. He, he could be good at anything. He could be a lot better than what he's doing. He's a giant-ass guy that could legit kick your ass. What do, yeah. more do you want from the guy? He can wrestle uh, confidently. Uh, you know the clothesline that he's doing, like a uh, spinning clothesline, whatever. Yeah, that looks sick. Imagine hitting M. Jeff with that shit. <sighs> That'd be cool. <laughs> that would be fucking great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I like to see that. <laughs> uh, now, just not to think that Kurt was slightly going off the D band a little bit. He was asked what stars he would push if he was given the chance. Two names. A kind of meh. You got Shorty G, which I mean, come on, he ain't gonna make it. Why are you calling it? him Shorty G? Exactly. See, Chad Gable. That's Cedric Alexander makes sense, and Lacey Evans, one of the worst women wrestlers they have. And she is the baby fish right now. Chad Angle, you're <laughs> starting to lose your your mental state there, mate. Uh, now, I do have a. A uh, tweet sent out by Joey Janella showing unhappiness, which I think was resolved, but we'll talk about it now. He did delete this tweet, but he said, Didn't get my flat flight out for AEW Dynamite. I'm not going. Nothing to, nothing was addressed about the way I was eliminated from the match last week. I'm losing all the steam I created through 14 years of hard work. Write these wrongs and answer the phone. Hmm. Uh, he, but with this, uh, he has now been booked for this week's AEW Dynamite to face John Moxley. So, seems like whatever happened between yeah. them has now been solved. Apparently, which is a good thing because uh, if AEW can solve any problems where talents are unhappy, then it will make it a lot less like a WWE situation going on. Yeah. WWE do not have many talents that actually like being there. I mean, they have done. Huh. What the fuck yeah, they, they just squander them. Yep. Now, uh, let's move on to our awards for the week because I'm out of wrestling oh, yes. news. Uh, yep. Oh, wait. No, we have one more thing to discuss. Dash Rollins heel turn. You wanted to talk about that? <sighs> yeah. A lot of people are talking about it. I forgot. Uh, you know, people go and say, "Oh, he is he's he is a heel right now." Like, shut the fuck up. He ain't a heel yet, dude. You know what I mean? He's transitioning next into week, a heel. Yeah, and that's a big if. You know that I mean. Like, they can easily ha uh, have this guy apologize and be like, "Oh, everything is fine, whatever." You know. Yeah, exactly. I know what happened at the end of the Raw, but keep this in mind. 
outers of paint. Dude, would you be actually surprised if we have a switch, a bait a switch, and then you have like a Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins against the outer of paint? I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. No, I can see them definitely doing that. You know, yeah, so he didn't turn heel yet. You know, no. uh, knowing WWE, dude, you know, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Knowing Vince, dude, this guy is going to have Alters of Pain aligned with Kevin Owens against Seth Rollins. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, we are talking about Vince McMahon. You know, three big guys against one guy, and then Seth Rollins kicks their ass. I wouldn't be surprised because they, they don't give a shit about the reaction. Hey, Roman Reigns' experiment is the proof of that. They don't care. Exactly. So. But I love Seth Rollins as a heel. Even I put the picture in the background, as you can guys see, Seth Rollins as a heel back in 2015. And that's my favorite yeah. Seth Rollins character. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't work as a baby face. He will never work as a baby face because he is such an arrogant asshole that it comes across in his character when he's on TV. So why would you cheer for an arrogant asshole? Like, you know what they did? What? He was actually a heel. He was even an asshole before that. Yeah. What they did is very simple. They used his Twitter character and just put it in his live television character. This guy was saying shit on Twitter for already months. Yeah. They just used that guy and put him on TV. So he's just saying stuff on TV. You know what I mean? I do. So like, at least like, with the Miz's baby face, he look he does seem like a nice person. So you want to cheer? Yeah, he's maybe be a bit arrogant, but he doesn't do it who, in an arsehole way it? when he's a face. Whereas Seth Rollins just for some reason he seems to be more of an arrogant arsehole when he's a face. Yeah, and what the fuck is with all the WWE with the back closes? Like with the back clothes. Like when someone is a heel, they. Gotta have a person in a black clothes and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> Seriously, like it's bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. What do you think? Where do you think is this going? Uh, I think he'll apologize this week by getting the authors of pain to come out and beat everybody up. I think it's going. I think he's going to apologize. I think he's going to team up with Kevin Owens, and I think then he's going to turn it on. I can see them doing that. There's definitely going to be... And then he'll align with Authors of Pain. You know what will be the worst storyline? And people get ready fucking for this. You're going to roll it back. Roll, it, uh, roll your eyes in the back of your head. I, I I can't even pronounce things anymore. How much I'm talking. Dude, I didn't even have a sip of water in this fucking hour. Jesus. Think about this. Think about this. Just a second. Okay. Think about this. And Tom, you know this is this can happen very easily. Seth Rollins wants his title back. Who is the champion? Brock Lesnar. Oh. You're gonna have a coward heel, Seth Rollins, aligned with Altus of Pain, going against a babyface Brock Lesnar. Oh god. And no. people will accept babyface Brock Lesnar because when Lesnar always shows up, people cheer when he's away for two months. And be ready for this. Everyone is saying Roman Reigns can win Rumble and He's gonna face the Fiend, blah blah blah. What if Seth Rollins wins the Rumble? How are you gonna feel, huh? Oh, and we get Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar, part 100 at WrestleMania in the main event. Oh. Get ready, because you know, Tom, you know, I know, there is about 50% of that happening. I, I honestly prefer chance. to see Roman Reigns face Brock Lesnar again than to see Seth Rollins because his matches with Brock were just yeah, shit. Yeah, but he 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 can have waters of pain and he can win, and people will uh, uh, people will accept Brock Lesnar's babyface. You know that it happened before. They can just turn a guy, you know. Yeah. All you need is Heyman to go out there and say stuff, you know. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, you know. No, but right. that's my take. That's my take. I, uh, I don't think. I think if he turns, it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be next week. You know, I can see like I can see authors of pain attacking people, but I can see that he is claiming like not to have anything to do with that. As a matter of fact, do you know uh, a character, governor from Walking Dead? Uh, yeah. 
had Seth Rollins been like that character, he can say stuff uh, for people to really believe that he's saying stuff and for the rock locker. In the meantime, you have other people working for him in the back attacking everyone. And he just claims everything is fine, whatever. He d doesn't have anything to do with that. Yeah, you definitely could do that. That's a great stuff. I don't know what to say anymore. Anyway. That's it for a topic. Yeah, I mean, just let's do a wars because Seth Rollins annoys me enough as it is. Yep. Okay. Uh, you probably want to kick his ass because of Becca Lynch, anyways. Yes, definitely. Fucking <laughs> took my woman. <laughs> took my woman. Okay. Uh, best shirt this week was NXT because of course it was. Dude, the match is from top to bottom. Like, hey, I gotta give props to Roddy Strong. That guy came out unprepared. Bobby Fish got injured. I don't know what the fuck is wrong. Bobby Fish is, by the way, 23 years old. So, really? Oh, I'm young fucking man. serious. On well, Wikipedia it says 40, but he is actually 43. I don't know why. Um, to be fair, I'm pretty sure Bobby Fish has got a massive ass concussion after that sh uh, that spot. Yeah, but I gotta give really props to Roddy because the guy came out in the dreams. He wasn't even ready to compete. He was there and he was just added to match and they won. Like, that's a big fucking deal. Especially, you know, it shows the chemistry th those guys have because you can just go randomly into match and just put on a great match, you know, without a plan. All right, so. No. So very uh, good. And yeah, Trump a call. Uh, no, no, Trump. Yeah, Trump a call. Balor. Balor beats Champa. Uh, Champa, right? He pinned him. Uh, Cole wanted to whatever to align with Balor and Balor. Bell kicked him. I know this. This is gonna lead, dude. I want to say this. You know this is gonna fucking lead to Andre Spiller returning and call at some point. You fucking <laughs> know it, dude. Like I know. I say this to everyone. You know, <laughs> like, uh, uh, I'm not looking from my perspective. I'm looking from WWE's. Like, they are looking on fucking Balor, dude. And I want this guy to stand alone. And I want, and I want Undisputed Era, era as they are, dude. But I don't, I don't know, because Undisputed Era sell a shit ton of merch, so I can't see them How breaking them up or ruining them. How do you know? How do you know that's the case? Because how many shirts do you see of the Undisputed Era in the crowd? You see a lot of Undisputed Era shirts. Yeah, but you see, my issue with this, dude, my issue with this is, even if I like fucking Cole and I like Matt Riddle, okay, that's not a secret. I don't want Cole to beat Gargano, uh, not Gargano, Champa and Balor. I don't want that to happen. You know? No, so I will see. But yeah, that's yeah. it for NXT. Uh, and best superstar. Jesus Christ has to go to Keith Lee just because of what he's done over the last couple of weeks has been amazing. So. Easily, this guy is fucking amazing. I was high on this guy. Hey, this guy yeah. is incredible. He's definitely fantastic. He definitely deserved the prop. And you are the In best. In my opinion, the guy who should win NXT title is Keith Lee. Yeah, you know? I think he should take it off, Cole. Exactly, I agree with that. The guy is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then best match is Champ versus Balor. You can see a theme running along these awards, can't you? Why? Because all the best stuff is NXT and all the worst stuff is SmackDown this week. <laughs> you can see uh. a theme pattern in here. Uh, but yeah, I've not actually personally watched the match, but I've heard you very, see, very good things about he's it. He's watching AW and he didn't watch NXT, so you people know what's better and you can agree with me that NXT was badass. I'm not saying that AW was bad because the AW is a fucking great show. But you just can't watch both in the same time. You tried, you attempted, I told you you were going to go crazy, and I was right. You watched, yeah, you tried I once, and you couldn't. Exactly. So and if I, I think it makes, you know, I, sorry, I think it makes sense that I'm watching NXT and you're watching AW. So we cannot have opinions, you know? And exactly. I can just see highlights, you know, and that kind of stuff. So. I should yeah. check out highlights of NXT. Uh, and well, then the AW, show. Dude, the fade up. Yeah, I should watch NXT uh, highlights. You should watch AW highlights. Exactly. I'm, I'm watching highlights from AW. Uh, I don't watch NXT highlights. I should. I should. Uh, worst show was SmackDown, but I, it wasn't a bad show, actually. It was a fairly <sighs> average show this week, which it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. So props to SmackDown for not being completely terrible this week. Yeah, props to Roman Reigns uh, for burying Bobby Roode, uh, Baron Corbin, and uh, Dolph Ziggler. 
Whatever I'm sure call. Bobby Roode got buried long before Roman Reigns came along. Yeah, yeah. Man, I can't believe that just three years ago, this Mac could have easily made a man WrestleMania when really getting this shit right. I know. So, yep. What does the worst happen? superstar is Dana Brooke because she rejected my man Drake Maverick when he had mistletoe. Oh, or do you see everything with what's happening with her and Dave Dave Batista on Twitter? <laughs> it's fucking dude, cringy shit. Dude, here's the thing, I don't give a fuck. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't care. Like, if you no. want to talk about your shit, talk privately. I don't. Why are you saying online? And then you have all these goons, you know, who are saying. Oh, you know, uh, let's hook up. Uh, uh, who wishes, basically, who they wish that Dana Brooke hooks up with the test. Why would I care about that? Like, those exactly. people don't have lives. Yet. Why do you care? I mean, her and Elias thing was cringy as well. And just, she just, uh, I don't like Dana Brooke. Man, I don't want to use this word, but with Batista, what's going on, and with the last backstage, and I seriously don't want to use this word. She's. She looks like a whore, dude. She you looks like I mean? a whore. Like a, uh, I don't know how you guys pronounce ho or what. Uh, you, you yeah, you got. Me. Fuck you. Ho whore, either long. one, either uh, one. Uh, but yeah, she kind of does not like present dude. herself as a classy lady in this at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's giving her the best personal look, image right now. Yeah. Uh, and the worst match Lana, was... What do you think about Lana? <laughs> oh yeah, Lana's a big slag. <laughs> okay, what yeah. else? What else uh, and worst match was Sonya Deville versus Nikki Cross, because that was just trash. I don't remember, nor do I care. Yeah, that's why I put it on there, because no one cares. Uh, there wasn't any really other worst matches I could think of, apart from that. Memorable so that's... award. Memorable thing goes to Alexa Bliss. And Nikki Cross because they're adorable. I gotta say. Yeah, I do like them as a pairing. And Seamus returned in the promo. And I, to be fair, I've missed Seamus. He looks like a fucking beast. I mean, I'm glad that for the New Day Open Challenge they didn't do the bar because I really think both Seamus needs to be on his own again. Yeah. The bar stuff got really stale. Yeah, unfortunately, the thing with Cesaro, he's never going to be a singles guy. Oh no, Cesaro so won't because. I don't think he's that good of a wrestler, to be honest. Dude, fucking watch. Why did I say this? Fucking watch them go with Cesaro and Sheamus against Shinsuke and Sami Zayn. What? Just wait for it, dude. It's gonna fucking happen because Cesaro was teaming up with Shinsuke. Yeah, it could. It'll be good. I just think Cesaro is slightly overrated for what people say. You know about what him. feud would I love to see? I know they were feuding before, but think about this: Sheamus wins the title from Nakamura. Nakamura feuds with Sami. Sheamus feuds, uh, feuds with Cesaro. Yeah. I don't know what to say. That's it for me. That's it for me. We are done. I now need to go and eat a Chinese because it is Saturday, which yeah. is Chinese night because yeah, well, it always yeah. is. And as always, it's been sitting down there for about three out of about yeah. four or five hours because o only only no minutes. only normal normal people eat in twelve or one a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Exactly. This is normal. Well, I still need to render this video, film my uh, first part for my new uh, thing, the opening of the advent. Check that out. That'll probably be up after this, I'd say. I'm going to try and get this up tonight. And then yeah. there'll be an advent video tomorrow afternoon or evening, whenever I get a chance to upload that. With me opening and an advent calendar hey, at Playmobil, because Starcast. reasons. Yeah, and yeah, it's been good. I'm. It's been a very good podcast, very good conversational. You forgot to tell people about the Starcast, dude. Oh yeah, watch Starcast as well, please, because yeah. money... Yeah, um, I mean, someone's yeah, got to watch Starcast. Are you streaming that shit or what? Yeah, of course I am. Well, promote yourself, dude. Say that you're going to be streaming because you I said will be else, streaming man. my live reactions to Starcast because why not? It's probably going to be a, a boring ass show, but what else are we going to do? Watch Tom's live stream. Don't watch. Yes, please. Starcast. Watch my live stream because we will be more entertaining than this yeah, show will be. Yeah, trust God me. God damn it. Make make a comment, okay? I, there's like a ten 
without people watching, you're just sitting there like quietly. I know I'm one of these guys who are just sitting there and playing a goddamn video game. But that, that's because I was, I know Tom for two fucking years. I was always there in chat before. So you can't say that I was not, okay? But seriously, what's the point in being, in watching something if you're just sitting there and the guy's probably fucking bored if you're not commenting anything. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. So. I, my streams work off comments because I like to have conversations exactly. with people about the boring ass wrestling we're watching. Exactly. Because it's not it's not going to be a good show. I can tell you that now. This is going to be boring as all hell. Yeah. We are just real here. Okay, we're not going to say it's going to be great. Because it's, <laughs> it's not going to be great. Yep. It's not going to be great, but okay. I kind of have nothing better to do. Yep. Now, speaking of better things to do, I haven't got anything else to talk about, so I'm going to go off and eat Chinese and film speaking videos. Speaking of better, and... of better things to do, Go play Star Wars Sniper Warrior or goddamn Outer Worlds world, if you exactly. don't have smarter to do because. I, I might you know. actually stream Outer Worlds Monday, maybe? I don't know if I'm at work Monday. Next time yeah, I've got yeah, Dale, yeah, I'm going to yeah. be playing Outer Worlds as well yeah. again because exactly. I want to continue playing that story. I just need to correct one of my mistakes in the. Hey, actually, say what you have to say because I want to close the show. I want to say one word. After we finish everything. Yeah. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching the podcast. Okay. Here's Stefan with his final word. That's the one.